Welcome back to Legit Street Cars. My name is Alex, and yes, I know it's been a very long time since I last uploaded a video on my diesel Mercedes, and I'm not going to sugarcoat this at all. The car straight up looks abandoned as it's been sitting under a tree for the last two months. In the last video, I removed the fuel injectors to send them out and have them honed for more fuel and more power, but they failed the injector test. So I had to order a new set of injectors. And in the meantime, I fixed up a salvaged Tesla with a friend, and now this Tesla is mine, and I worked on a bunch of other projects. Now I feel horrible for letting this car rot outside and I could rattle off a bunch more excuses, but I much rather just get to work as I'm resurrecting this project. Go ahead and call me a bad owner and that I don't deserve this car in the comment section, but I have new fuel injectors, new intercooler charge pipes, a bigger high pressure fuel pump, and a new AC condenser since the last one was damaged by hitting an armadillo at 80 miles an hour. We're going to be getting into all of this stuff in this video, and I've already vacuumed out all of the leaves. But if you guys don't mind, I have to clean the CDI because I just can't stand looking at it like this any longer. And when you have eight cars, you got to line up quite a few of them and just do this at the same time. It's the only way. I love foam cannons. <laughs> All right, I just got done with my microfiber mitts on the CDI, so she is all cleaned up, and now I'm gonna rinse it off with the pressure washer, and then I'm gonna let it air dry. All right, guys, so all three of my cars have been washed, and they have been rinsed, and they are literally sitting here in the sun air drying and this is normally a big no-no you don't want your car to air dry because you're going to get a bunch of water spots it's because water has minerals dirt contaminants and when it dries on the surface of your car you're going to see that but I have a secret weapon, the No Spots Pro. This is an amazing product. And these have been around for a long time. So this is a water ionizer. Just imagine it's a big water filter. And basically you feed it the water from your house on this side and it comes out this way. It goes through the tank in the meantime and it gets completely filtered. So this water is gonna have no more minerals, no more dirt and contaminants. So you can literally let your car air dry. All right, it's been about an hour and the cars are totally dry. We have our injectors ready to go back in the diesel and while I was washing it I found this dent here so a tree branch must have fallen on this car it's not a problem my dent guy will get that out we have to do a full paint correction on this car I feel horrible but I will fix it up and in the meantime take a look at this after baking in the sun for an hour the surface of the e55 looks perfect there are no spots on this car there are no spots on the white turbo Trans Am and that is all thanks to the no spots pro so this is made in the United States it comes with a five-year warranty and a full money-back guarantee and it's super easy to use just feed it water from your house hook up your garden hose to this end and rinse your car off and if you guys want to get one of these i'll leave a link in the video description box down below or you can go to nospotspro.com legit and get 10 percent off what you guys never seen a guy fill up his tire from the back of his nine second turbo trans am <laughs> of course i have an air tank and a compressor in that car it's probably the most legit street car that i own all right 35 that'll do it Seriously, the Turbo Trans Am is the ultimate roadside service vehicle. Of course, the battery in the CDI is totally dead and my battery charger, it won't do anything until it senses some kind of voltage in the battery. So we're charging it up with this, my turbocharged six liter V8 LS engine. Oh, and if you guys are curious about the air compressor setup in the back, this is all that you see. So you can still use your T-top holders and everything. But here, let me just show you what I have going on here. I made a video about this a couple of years ago on the five most unique modifications done to the Trans Am. I'll leave a link down below if you guys want to check it out. But one of them is this. So I have a one gallon tank and a little air compressor. And its primary function is not to fill up tires. It's actually to send air to an electronic wastegate system. So I have full control over the boost. With the battery charging up, it is time to get this engine running. I'm so excited. It's been over two months. And to do that, we need to put our fuel injectors back in. And yes, these are the original fuel injectors that I took out. They have about 200,000 miles on them. I sent them out to Rochester Diesel to have them home and they couldn't do it and that is because four of six of them failed so they gave me a sheet like this on each injector so they flow tested these they leak tested these and I'm not going to pretend uh, to know what any of this stuff means but more red X's than green check marks means bad and four of these failed and if you guys remembered last winter I was having some trouble starting this car when it got to about negative 30 degrees out
And then if you compare that to my silver CDI at the exact same time, you can see that it starts much better. So this car has brand new glow plugs from the previous owner, so I always suspected that it had bad fuel injectors, and I always thought that this car was a little bit slower than the silver CDI as well. So you guys have seen me put fuel injectors in a CDI a few times, so I'm gonna go ahead and zip these in, and we're gonna see how this starts after sitting for over two months, and then we're pulling it into the garage where, don't worry, I'll explain to you why I'm not installing the new ones just yet. Again, finally I can drive it. If you guys are curious on what happens when you get black death, this is it. You can see the smoke and you can hear it. I just basically threw these injectors back in with old seals and I barely tightened them up because we're just going in the garage basically. But that's what you'll get. It's leaking combustion just right out. Man, oh man, am I excited to see the CDI back in the legit streetcar's garage, ready to go under the knife and finally make some good power, guys. I am gonna be getting this to the dyno soon. I promise with the new fuel injectors and the bigger pump, it's gonna be awesome. So I knocked off some of the rust from the rotors. Uh, and before we go ahead and rip and tear into this thing, let me show you guys the fuel injectors. So as I told you, I sent my original ones out to Rochester. They failed their test, which meant that they couldn't be honed out for more flow. And that meant I had to find a new fuel injector. And after doing a ton of research, there's a bunch of options out there, guys. There's some scary options too, like on eBay, Chinese rebuilt ones. You don't want any of that, guys. I went with a remanufactured Bosch injector. So these are the factory units remanufactured by Bosch. And of course, I got these from FCP Euro. And guys, you know, I always talk about FCP. I love those guys. Honestly, they are like really good friends of mine now. They're just fantastic, great customer service. Um, but they have the lifetime warranty. And on something like this, on something that costs a little bit of money, that is so, so important. So don't mess around. Get the factory ones. Get them from FCP. They're the same price as everybody else anyway. And you get a lifetime warranty instead of a one-year warranty like most other places. So anyway, they sent me the whole kit with the new seals, the bolts. Uh, this is the special lubricant that you need to put on the injector as well. Uh, these are $303 a piece, but if you guys have one of these diesels, these are an investment type of car. So if this is something you want to drive for literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of miles, get the good Bosch ones, get the lifetime warranty. You'll never have to worry about them again. Uh, so that is what I did. I had to get these remanufactured uh, injectors and I will be sending these out to Rochester now to have them honed out. So this was the only way to do it. But if you guys have a car that's maybe blowing some black smoke, maybe it's down on power, maybe you're having a hard time starting it. After you look at the glow plugs, this is basically your next step, guys. The injectors on these cars do not last forever. At about this mileage, they will start to leak internally, especially depending on what type of diesel fuel you're running. So there's a good chance you guys at this age of these cars uh, have bad fuel injectors. So anyway, we have our bigger uh, fuel pump. This is the main high pressure injection pump that's out of uh, like an E400 or whatever the V8 turbo diesel is in Europe. Uh, so I got that shipped out to me. We're going to be installing that in this video. We have new charge pipes. I'll show you guys everything you need to know about the intercooler. I know I kind of left you guys in the dark on that, but I'll explain everything for the intercooler measurements and all of that good stuff. And we're replacing the condenser since I hit an armadillo going 80 miles an hour that destroyed mine. So let's get to work.
And welcome to my diesel life. Guys, this is super frustrating, but unfortunately par for the course for this project. So I meant to install this high pressure fuel pump right now. And now that I'm taking a good look at this, I don't even see how that's physically possible. So when I got this pump, I knew that there were some modifications I needed to make. Uh, for example, I believe the fan wouldn't exactly fit, so I had to grind away a portion of that to fit this section. Uh, and then we had to run this with an inline hose, but no big deal, that was supposed to be about it. But after looking at this, I don't even see how this is physically possible. So we have our fuel line coming in here. Over on this side, we have this connection here and this and this. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, also, we have this connector right here. Ours is on this side and this is facing, I think, the only way that it can. So I don't think I can turn this around or anything. It wouldn't help. All this stuff would be on the opposite side then. Uh, so I don't know, guys. I'm going to put the part number down below in the description box. Maybe one of you can help me out there. Maybe I have the wrong pump or if you could email me at Legit Street Cars, that would really help. This car is going to be disabled on my rack so I have to get this done now, kind of under the gun. Uh, but anyway, we're moving on uh, and take a look at some carnage here. So when I got the intercooler kit, it came with some really cheap couplers and this one just blew apart. So we have a one piece design. It's gonna get rid of the aluminum and it's gonna get rid of two clamps on each side. So that's pretty cool. We're gonna have less risk of it blowing off since there's uh, less connection points. Um, but first, before we get to that, I have to move this condenser back. So the armadillo hit the front of this bumper. I was going 80 miles an hour. This is the damage it did on the bumper here. And what it did is it pushed in the intercooler and it pushed it right into the condenser, poked a hole. So I'm gonna get some beefier uh, 90 degree mounts here. Although I don't know if that would have helped with hitting an armadillo, which is basically a rock at 80 miles an hour, but I have to bend this back. Uh, so we have the proper clearance and then we are replacing uh, this condenser and I wasn't gonna do this, but I'm gonna show you guys a little surprise, uh, something new for the car, a bunch of new parts actually that are not in the garage. So anyway, let me get this condenser in, let's get the coupler on there and then I'll measure everything up and give you guys all the details you need to know so you can duplicate uh, an aftermarket front mount intercooler like I did. And note to self, it's much easier to replace your AC condenser with your front mount intercooler removed, especially if you have simple L brackets like I do. So you just remove the top bolts from both bracket and this thing comes out in two minutes. So take a look at the damage on the AC condenser. So this is from the armadillo hitting the front of the car and then the intercooler smashing into the condenser. The intercooler is in good shape though, so we are good to go there. Another reason I'm really excited about replacing this AC condenser is look at what we found behind it. So this is on the radiator and this is 200,000 miles of dirt and debris. And this was a country highway car before I bought it. Uh, so there are plenty of leaves and bees and all sorts of little bugs in here. So <laughs> So if you have shop air, the best way to clean this after vacuuming it is blowing it out from the inside, but you will absolutely destroy your garage. As you can see, dust and debris everywhere. So check this out. <laughs>
All right, you can spend all day on this, but take a look at what we have now. It's looking pretty clean. All right, we are all back together and looking awesome, and I really need to replace the lenses on these headlights. So comment down below if you want me to paint them black like I did with the E55. All right, so onto the intercooler. Guys, this ended up working perfectly. I had to send in a couple different measurements and we had to test fit a couple of these, uh, but these are perfect. So I will link this down below. This side is two and a half. This is three, so there's no adapters needed. It just kind of like tapers down. Uh, and then as far as the size of the intercooler, I can't find my tape measure, but I'll put it up here on the screen. That is the size of the intercooler, and I'll also link that down below uh, in the video description box. So I'll leave all the dimensions and the measurements and a direct link uh, just to go buy this and these. As far as the 90 degree L brackets go, uh, I did order up a set of these right here. So these are uh, kind of a little bit more beefy and have some supports on the side. So this should hold the intercooler much better than what I have now. Although these did not fail on me under normal circumstances at all. These worked out great, but hitting that armadillo here uh, just didn't make this happy at all. But now we are away from the intercooler. We're not rubbing against anything, but I'll go ahead and install those L brackets in the next episode, along with the honed out injectors and along with the bigger pump. So let me go show you guys a little surprise. All right, guys, welcome to underneath my deck where I'm currently storing some bumpers. So you guys can probably guess what these are. This is the full E63 body kit. So I have the front and rear bumpers and I also have the side skirts right there. So these are going to the body shop uh, soon, but I'm kind of debating on whether or not I want to put these on yet. We are getting pretty close here to wintertime in Chicago. So I don't know if there's much of a point to uh, get these nicely painted and then put them through a disgusting, horrible, blizzardy Chicago winter. But anyway, uh, I'll get this done soon. But first and foremost, we are focusing on performance. I want to hit the dyno and see what this diesel can do fully tuned with a ton more fuel. And that'll do it for today's video. And I just want to give a big special thanks to you guys out there, especially everybody who's been following along with the diesel build since day one. I know this is taking forever and trust me guys, I'm just as frustrated as you guys, but I keep on running into parts hurdles and now we have the issue with the high pressure fuel pump that I have to figure out. But don't worry, I'm sending those injectors out to be honed today. We have the car dead on the rack right now, so that means I really can't work on anything until this car is moving on its own power. And I bought another project car that I'm not even gonna reveal until this car is making good power on the dyno. So I'm definitely committed to getting the performance part of this done, definitely this year, and then we'll talk about cosmetic stuff maybe next spring or something like that, I don't know. Uh, but anyway guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button, share the video, subscribe if you're new, and most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll see all of you in the next video.